guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm finally going to show you how to make something that I've gotten a lot of requests for, pizza. I'm going to show you how to make everything from scratch, the dough, the sauce, and want to top it a couple different ways. My, my, my favorite toppings anyway. So this is what you're going to need just to make the dough, and it's the first thing we're going to do because it needs to rise for a couple of hours. So all you'll need is some all-purpose flour, some warm water, some yeast, salt, sugar, and some extra virgin olive oil. Very simple, very few ingredients, but we're gonna do it from scratch and it's super, super easy. Now, I, my father um, owned a couple pizza places, a couple restaurants, so if I don't know how to make pizza, I'd be in serious trouble. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take a cup and a third of lukewarm water, about 110 degrees. Just gonna put in this bag of dry yeast, little baggy and just stir this around just to get the yeast combined in the water okay and leave it alone for about five minutes you want the yeast mixture to look kind of creamy and I know it's strange but you'll definitely be able to notice it in about three to five minutes so just set it aside and then we'll continue making our dough so we have the yeast ready it looks kind of creamy, a little bit odd, but hey, it works. Okay, set that aside. Now, in the bowl of a standing mixer with a dough attachment, I'm gonna put in here, I'm gonna start off with three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. It usually takes about three and a half to four cups, but you just never really know. So just have your flour near you. Two. And just a half. Okie doke. So we have the flour in. Get that out of the way. We have a tablespoon of salt. We have a teaspoon of sugar. And we're gonna put in about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Just gonna mix this just slowly to combine like all the flour and salt and the olive oil. Just mixing my yeast to make sure it's all. Here we go. And just put that in with the medium, with the speed on medium, just until everything's combined. Then you're gonna put the uh, speed to low and it's gonna continue to mix for about 10 minutes until everything kind of coheres together and it forms a really nice smooth dough. This is at medium speed, just until everything kind of starts to combine together. Now I'm gonna turn the speed to low. Kind of low. Jeez. And I'm gonna let this go for 10 minutes, just until you have a really, really smooth pizza dough. So I had this on for 10 minutes at slow speed. This is absolutely perfect. Now because I'm going to make two different pizzas, I'm just going to hang on to this for a second and get my bowls ready because this has to rise. So I'm just going to put a little olive oil in each bowl and just using a little brush, I'm just going to brush it just to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm just going to cut this in half. Look at that, that's perfect pizza dough. Thank you, Daddy, for teaching me how to make good pizza. Okay, now I'm just forming this into a ball, and look how easy it is. You just, each side, you just pull it in like so, and pinch. Pull it in like so, and pinch, and then just take the bottom, just pinch it together. Perfect ball, every time. Just inside, Seam side down in your bowl. Just gonna do the same thing with this, and I mean, you can do this really, really fast, so that's why I wanted to show you. Okay. Seam side down in the oil bowl, oiled bowl, and now I'm just gonna put a little oil at the top just to make sure it doesn't form like a crusty, dry skin. Brush it on each one. Okay, let's just cover this with some silk wrap, cover it tightly, 
second one. Now this is going to go, both of these are going to go into a warm space. I usually put these in the oven with the oven turned off because you don't want any draft, any wind, anything like that from like opening the doors and stuff. Keep it in there for about two hours until it's doubled its volume. So this is the first step. Second step, we're gonna make our no cook pizza sauce. Now we're gonna make our no cook pizza sauce to go on top of one of the pizzas we're gonna make. All you're gonna need is some tomato puree or tomato sauce, whichever you have, and some dried oregano, dried basil, a little sugar, some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some salt and pepper. Now the reason why I'm not using fresh garlic and fresh onions is because, like I said, it's a no-cook sauce, so we're not gonna cook it ahead of time. It's just gonna cook in the oven for like 20 minutes on the pizza, and the garlic and the onions won't be really cooked all the way, it'll be really strong. Don't want that. Now this is so much a matter of taste. So as you go along, see I got my two little trusty spoons with me. I'm gonna keep tasting it just to see if I'm good at, you know. Um, but like I said, it's all the taste. So I'm just gonna put in, this is about, I wanna say, a quarter of a teaspoon of dried oregano. Same amount of dried basil. Remember, dried herbs are much stronger than fresh herbs. Some granulated garlic, about a half a teaspoon of that, half a teaspoon of granulated onion, some salt, generous pinch of salt, some pepper. And I'm gonna put in a little sugar. Now the reason why I'm putting sugar is because the tomatoes are very acidy. Now if I were cooking it, I wouldn't put sugar because if I cook tomato puree for a long time, it breaks down the acid of the, 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 the tomato and just gets really sweet naturally. But because we're not cooking it for a long time, it needs a little help. So I'm just gonna mix this together. It smells great. I'm just gonna test, taste it. It's good, but I can use more flavoring. This is so good that you can just taste and go, taste and go. And it's up to you. Okie doke, that's done. I'm just gonna set this aside. Now what you wanna do is you wanna preheat your oven to 475, you want it hot, hot, hot. Now, you should be using a pizza stone. It is the closest thing you're going to get to that crispy, delicious pizza crust that you love from your local takeout place. So just invest in one. It's not that expensive and it's, you can keep it forever and it's just great to make like any kind of bread. It just gives you that, you know, pizza place quality that we love. And you wanna have that preheating um, in the oven for about 20 minutes before you put your pizza on top. Now, what, if you don't have one of those, you can take a baking sheet and you can turn it upside down and you can put it in there. That'll kinda of give you the same effect, but it won't give you that crispy crust that you love. And I'm just using a pizza peel, obviously. I am the daughter of a pizza man, so if I wouldn't have one of these at home, I'd be in trouble. And I'm using one of these, but if you don't have one, you can use the same thing upside down baking sheet to hop it slide right off of the baking sheet when you put it in the oven, right? Because how are you gonna get a pizza from the counter to the oven? Get it? Okay, enough of that. I'm just gonna clear up a little bit. I'm gonna make two kinds of pizza. I'm gonna make a white pizza and I'm gonna make a red pizza. And first thing we're gonna make is a red pizza. So I'm just gonna clean up, get my stuff, and we'll get started. Now our dough has doubled in volume, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm gonna make a red pizza. Half of it is gonna be a margarita pizza, which is like just tomato sauce and fresh mozzarella and basil, which I love. And the other half of it is just gonna be um, sausage and peppers that I had left over from last night's dinner. This is a great way to use up any leftovers. If you have leftover meatballs, slice them up, put them on your pizza. If you have leftover eggplant, slice it up, you have eggplant parm pizza. You name it, steak, chicken, whatever. Just put it on your pizza and it's always such a hit. All right, so we're gonna have to work fast, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is take a little flour onto my pizza peel. Now, I'm doing this on my pizza peel. If you don't have one, like I said, an upside down baking sheet will do. So just take note that whatever I'm doing on my pizza peel is what you will be doing on your baking sheet if you don't have one. You wanna just dust it, but not too, too much. Okie doke. Now I'm gonna work fast, okay? Cause I do this with my hands, no rolling pin. You can do it like I'm doing it. Just take a rolling pin out, roll it out. It's that simple. We're gonna take the dough, okay? We're not gonna punch it down or anything. Just gonna dredge it in the flour. I'm gonna go to the sides as well. 
a little flower on my board. I'm gonna go directly onto my pizza peel. Okay, here's how she goes. You push down with your fingers, turn the same direction. Then you take your two fingers about a half inch around the border, okay? Pushing it with your hand and just adjusting it as you go along. Just like so. So now you have your, your edging right here, okay? Push the center a little bit more in. Now this is gonna be your guide as to forming your pizza, okay? You probably should be more careful than I'm being. I'm just gonna do this over here for now, watch. Just to form it out, and then with your hands, you just wanna stretch it carefully, carefully. You don't wanna go too thin, otherwise you'll put a hole in the crust. But I'm using my ring and I shouldn't be. Here you go. I did use my ring and I made a little hole there. But that's perfect. See, it's exactly what we're looking for. It's perfect round every time. Don't ask me how I do it slow motion. I don't know how, I just gotta do it fast. All right, now we're gonna top it. You're gonna take your no cook sauce and using a ladle just works best. Because using the back of it, you swirl it until it covers, but it leaves about a half inch around the edge. Okay? Just like so. I'm just gonna get you step through step. I'm not gonna stop just because I want you guys to see the whole thing. And try to work fast so that your pizza doesn't stick. We have our pizza sauce down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the mozzarella. Same thing we did in our restaurant. You never buy pre-shredded mozzarella whenever you're making a pizza. It's not the same. So I'm gonna take half of it and I'm gonna slice it for this pizza. And the other half I'm gonna grate it because I wanna grate it for my white pizza. I'm just gonna slice it thinly and just Place it just about all over the pizza. And this is whole milk mozzarella. Got that down. Now, half of it is going to be just tomato and, and, and mozzarella, and then we'll put the basil at the end. And the other half, I'm going to put some leftover sausage, peppers, and onions. And I don't like a lot of topping on my pizza, but you can put as much or as little as you want. I mean, it's really totally, totally optional, totally to taste. Really important step, guys. Pick up a little bit of the dough and blow under it. See that? That makes it not stick. You wanna make sure it doesn't stick. It's gonna go right in to my preheated oven on my pizza stone, okay? And shimmy shake your way out. And it's still in that perfect circle. And in about three minutes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back in because it starts to form big bubbles around the edge. And just using your knife or fork, pierce those big bubbles. And that's gonna cook for about 20 minutes until it's really nice and golden and crispy and it's exactly how we want it. I just took this pizza out of the oven and make sure you rotate it once halfway through the cooking time so it can cook evenly. And look at that. I don't know if you can see, but I'll lift it up for you. See, perfectly golden crust, nice and crispy. Now I'm just gonna finish this half, which is my margarita half with some fresh basil all over the top. And then, I just really want a lot of basil because my husband and I love basil. Can't get enough of it. And then I'm just gonna put a tiny drizzle of extra virgin olive oil on that half. And pizza number one is done. I'm gonna set this aside, get the other dough, and we're gonna make a white version. So now, first thing I'm gonna do to make my other pizza is make the garlic oil that we're gonna brush on the actual crust. Now, like I said, I'm making a white pizza. This is just one clove of garlic. And I'm just pressing through a garlic press because I want it extremely, extremely fine. Just like that. Just one clove is going to be more than enough. And about a tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil. Just mix that around. Now, what we're going to do next is make, like I said, a white version. And my favorite white version is with ricotta cheese, garlic, spinach, and broccoli and mozzarella. That's what we're going to make. Now I use frozen chopped spinach. Defrost them, wring out all the water. They're perfectly to use for pizza. And I also use frozen cut up broccoli. It's just much easier to, to, to steam fresh broccoli than cut it up, blah, blah, blah. Just make sure everything is really well thawed out and drained out of any liquid. All right, now all I'm gonna do next is roll, roll out my uh, second piece of dough and then we're gonna top it together. now 
is just brushing the actual crust with that garlic oil. You really don't need a lot. That one tablespoon of oil with that one clove of garlic is way more than enough. You have that down. Now what I do is I put my toppings under my cheese. Why? That's just because of the way I like it. But you can do it however you want. And I'm using one box of frozen defrosted spinach, chopped spinach. And I'm using about a cup and a half to two cups of chopped up broccoli. Got my spinach and broccoli down, seasoning it lightly with salt and pepper. Not too much salt, but they really don't have much flavor. So I want to help them out along. Okay, next thing we're going to do is take about a half a cup of whole milk ricotta, and I'm just going to drop all around. That's all. Okay, now I have my other half of the mozzarella, and all I did was shred it with a box grater. Just grate it up. This is I want fine pieces. And I'm just going to put this all over my last of the mozzarella. Now I put the veggies under the cheese because it really keeps the veggies more moist that way. Because if I were to put it on top, the hot, hot oven is going to completely dry them out. I don't want that. Blow under the crust. Shimmy shake to the oven. And she goes about 20 minutes, rotating it halfway through. White pizza is out. Does it not look amazing? I don't know about you, but they definitely look professional. Well, they should. I made them. <laughs> but they really look awesome, and they're really easy to make. You can definitely do it yourself. And I know a lot of people get the two mixed up. Confu co time consuming and difficult. This is not difficult. It's a little time consuming, but definitely not difficult. You could definitely make homemade pizza on, on your own. The difficult part is gonna be which one to choose. I don't know. I'm definitely glad I have them both here because it's going to be delicious. I'm going to have a little piece of each one. I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with me. To get this recipe and other recipes, check out my website, www.laurenthekitchen.com. I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.